and I'm here um, for Broadway World Raleigh with Penn Holderness, who is going to be in Rocky Horror Picture Show, yes. or Rocky Horror, um, at Theater Raleigh, which opens next week at Coca Booth Amphitheater. I'm excited to sit down with you. It's my pleasure. Um, I want to kind of go back, because when I first moved here, you, you were on the news, and then yes. <laughs> you left the news I and did. started your own video production um, company, and I remember the first video, at least I saw, was the Christmas Jammies one, which has something like 18 million views, um, and many videos since then. So how did the video start, and who kind of comes up with those ideas, and, and what made you what made you leave the cushy news desk? <laughs> uh, oh, those are all good questions. Yeah. Um, well, okay. Uh, First, I'll go chronologically so okay. you can, can understand. Um, the news was great. Um, it was kind of cush. Cushy is a good, is an okay way to, to, to describe it. Um, news is kind of similar to theater, though, in that there's this kind of whacked out supply demand curve where there are a lot of people who want your jobs and a very finite number of jobs. So it, it can be a little bit cutthroat. Uh, it can be a little bit intense and it can be frustrating sometimes. Um, and I know that's something that actors go through as well when they're, when they're trying to get parts. Um, but my wife and I realized after almost 20 years of doing it, that we, what we really enjoyed about news was creating content. Um, and for me, that wasn't necessarily putting a coat and tie on and reading about murders in the triangle at 11 o'clock <laughs> and politics and all these other things. It was, it, you know, being able to do, tell stories and the, the higher up I got in the news business, the fewer stories I got to tell because I was really just reading other people's work and kind of introing it like Brian Williams or, you know, uh, Matt Lauer might do. Uh, and so I, you know, we made a decision that we wanted to make our own content. We, um, we bought a, an editing computer, we bought a camera, and we started doing um, video for commercial real estate that they needed. They needed content. So we found creative ways to tell their story. It was kind of boring. It was real estate, but we tried to make it fun and we started making money off of it. And we got about a two month runway of, of where I could say, okay, I'm going to quit this. I and mean, we, I had benefits and was making a decent amount of money, but we were like, look, let's, let's try it. We have enough to last us a couple of months. And if it doesn't work, we'll go back to Starbucks or something else. But this news thing isn't very much fun. So <laughs> we decided to make a Christmas video with our family. Uh, and use some of the storytelling tools that we wanted to use for our production company, which was humor, uh, music, and um, you know relatability. We want we we believe that uh, companies should tell stories that are relatable instead of try to look uh, awesome and, and amazing like a Mercedes Benz ad. Uh, and so we kind of featured our family in this song, hoping that maybe our grandparents would like it and they would share with their grandparents, or our parents would share with their friends, or make it like a couple of gigs. And to your point, it just kind of exploded. It got uh, millions of views in uh, just a few days. We were on the Today Show and Nightly News and Joe Rogan's. Like, we were on all these crazy little places all over the world. And we got 13,000 emails because we put our email thing up. Uh, probably 12,000 of them were people who wanted to meet my wife. <laughs> um, and then maybe uh, a thousand of them were, literally a thousand of them were like work opportunities. And probably 900 of them were not reasonable. They weren't things that we could either do or were too far away from or wasn't really like the kind of money that you would want to make when you're making videos. But then like, we had a, a hundred legitimate leads for our company uh, to make these videos. So we started, you know, our idea was, okay, now we're going to make videos for other people. And then we had all these brands call us and say, no, no, we want you <laughs> on camera doing what you did with this video for our brand. And so we spent... I mean, we're still working on it, but we spent the last, you know, the next few several years trying to figure out how to do that. We had to hire an agent and a manager um, and find ways to tell relatable stories um, for ads, but also continue to put out more of those parody videos so that it wasn't just us doing ads for other people. Right. We discovered how to get subscribers on YouTube and likes on Facebook and navigate that whole thing. And that took a little bit of time as well. Uh, but, you know, all of a sudden we had... A production company that had some leads and we had a family brand that we kind of accidentally created that we had been trying to cultivate ever since. 
Are Penn Charles and Lola willing participants, or are they, you know? <laughs> they, they are. If, if they're not, you won't see them in the video. Okay. Um, I mean, we would be done with this a long time ago <laughs> if we were trying to force them to do it, because we create a lot of content. Um, and we we treat them kind of, I would imagine, how George Clooney is treated. Like, he, like there's a stand-in, we light everything, we get everything set up, and then, you know, when, when, uh, when they're ready, they come in and we've pressed the record button for a very short period of time. Uh, they have no idea what it really takes to put a video together at this point, and that's fine with me. Um, they've actually approached me about starting their own channels. Okay, and, nice. <laughs> but, I mean, look, it happens with kids, especially on YouTube, and you know, we told them, like, that's fine, but you guys have to see like, the amount of work that goes into this, and that's going to take us to a different place. Right now, it's very cushy for you guys. This is fun for you, right? If you want to make your own channel, that's, that's work, and you have to want to do it. And we're just kind of starting with those conversations. I'm not really sure which way they'll go. I don't really care. It's it, like it's, it's not it's not something that um, that is, is necessary for us to have, but it might be a, a good way for them to learn about hard work and, and kind of what it takes to, to create things. So the videos we've seen you sing, we've seen you kind of dance. Mm -hmm. um, they they really definitely um, have kind of this undertone of musical theater. Mm -hmm. Were you a musical theater kid? I was. Okay. Yeah, I know I, I was. I, I was in, so my first music. Uh, experience was with the North Carolina Boys Choir, uh, which I did for a couple of years. Um, and then after that, I went to a high school in Durham that was a lot like Broughton, uh, in that that's, that's where Lauren went to Broughton, right? Um, it, it's a lot like Broughton in that they really had an a, a emphasis on theater. So they had a big musical every year where they would bring in directors from, like, not from the school who were very talented, and they had a dramatic production every year. And so uh, I was not really an athlete. I was a, I was a theater guy in high school. And so I did, my first role was in 10th grade. <laughs> I know Ruby, right? <laughs> well, Ruby knows where I'm like, I, I, I played a, a dead body. I had no speaking parts. It was arsenic and old lace. Have you heard of that? Yeah. So course. there's, you know, the body they have to move around. <laughs> that was me. Um, and so I, they just dropped me on the floor everywhere. And, but I got to, uh, I was the understudy for all men. I memorized the entire play. So I got to, and, and there were all these, these guys were always out. And so during rehearsals, I got to play every single part. And I really fell in love with that. And so I did, uh, I did, ended up doing eight productions in my high school in the fall and in the spring. And then I, I didn't really do it in college. I, uh, I was in an acapella group. I was in a cover band and, um, and kind of moved toward journalism. And, and that part of my life kind of disappeared until we got back to writing music about five years ago. And I've, sort of rediscovered some of the things that I loved when I was younger and it's been awesome. Like the fact that music's part of my life again is, is a, a really true um, source of joy for me. So is Rocky Horror, you play Riff Raff in this mm -hmm. production of Rocky Horror, is this your first time on stage like this since high school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other than the video, I mean the videos are you know definitely musical the videos are different though you get to but, cut you yeah. get to like i, I can <laughs> just correct that out of here? myself <laughs> i have a lot like there's this program called logic and a, like a really flat b flat sounds like a perfect b flat with a push of <laughs> one button so no yeah this is my first like my first paid gig the pro um, first professional gig. first professional theater gig yeah wow so yeah. i know and, and you talk about the relatability and i do think that's why the videos are so um popular, but one thing I really could relate to is on your blog, you talk about how being in this production of Rocky Horror has really pushed you out of your comfort zone and how Kim, your wife, has kind of encouraged that. So talk about that a little bit. Talk about kind of uh, sure. being shoved out of the Holderness household <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, onto the stage. Yeah, I mean, I told you the story about how we got started. It was, I mean, it was a, a move outside. It was a, we, we went from a place of true comfort to a place of risk and discomfort. And we realized pretty quickly that uh, we loved it. And it was, it was risky. Um, uh, there were things that did not go well and things that did go well, but we felt like we were growing. Like not only as a, as a company or as a family brand, but also as a couple, like taking these leaps together. And so uh, we try to push each other into doing that. And lately my wife has become convinced that uh, we should do it more even more than we already did. Mm -hmm. And so this was an example of that. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable singing into a microphone in a studio upstairs. I'm comfortable acting in front of a camera. You know this as, as someone in the arts that acting in front of a camera is completely different from 
acting on stage. You have so many opportunities. And I really, uh, you know, I play a character in these videos that's myself. It's not really <laughs> acting. I'm just doing, I'm just being myself. Uh, and so, you know, being instructed, okay, you have to be a kind of creepy, big, quiet, mass murderer, alien henchman. Um, that is, that wasn't something that I could draw any personal experience from. On top of that, we have a director who is a, like her wheelhouse is choreography. And I have a lot of moving parts that don't, I mean, you saw like when we're having these uh, rehearsals, I have to tell my foot to do this while my other foot is doing this. And I have to say it out loud so that my brain and my body cooperate with each other. So that's not terribly comfortable either. It doesn't mean it's not fun. It's incredibly fun, but it's just, it's something that I'm not used to doing. It's, it's, I, I, you see people dance on these TV shows and you think, man, they're naturals. Well, I think they probably also have to work at it. And, uh, and so that's what, I, that's what I'm doing right now. Well, and, and so have you found kind of the biggest challenge to be the choreography? Because in the rehearsal videos, you're lifting people up. Mm -hmm. You're Yeah, we cut, that part. <laughs> we cut part of that out because I tweaked my back. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, uh, yes. Uh, yes and no. The, the, the choreography is something that they give you an instruction of and you can practice until you get it right and there's a standard. The hardest thing for me is acting and the nuances that go with it and learning how to give and take and all these things that I never, you know, when I was doing high school drama, I, no one ever gave me advice like this before. You know, you have to know what you want. You have to know what the other person in the scene wants. And then you have to turn that into a performance that is personal, subjective. There's not necessarily a right and wrong. And the director can't really instruct you exactly what you're supposed to do. You have to, it has to happen in there. So that part is, who knows if I'll get it. I definitely won't get it perfect by the time the play happens, but I see myself getting a little bit better every day and, and where the standard is here, I started down here and I don't know how high I'll get, but it's fascinating that you, you don't know what this is. You don't know how to get there and you might just do something and you're there or you might never get there when it comes to a moment because you don't get it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I just got a little trippy with that. But answer. I don't so. know that the audience, because in this kind of piece, first of all, this is based on... It was a show first, but uh -huh. then became this cult classic movie. Yeah, it started in the West End, right? Like right. That was, so Tim Curry so. was doing it on stage before he did it in the... Is that right? It was a mm -hmm. stage yeah. Yeah. musical right. before it was movie, but, but most people are familiar more with the, the movie and yeah. the cult kind of following, and I don't think... At least for me, I don't think people are going to see perfection, but I definitely think people are going to be curious to see you and kind of this um, live version of something that they kind of know and, and love. And so my question is to you is what, what are kind of the differences between kind of that film version expectation that people may come in with and the live show? Uh, I've only watched the movie twice. We have some people in our cast who, like, some of the principals have never watched the movie at all. And they did that on purpose. I think it's actually kind of a cool decision to make. They, they, they didn't want to have anything to base it on. Right. I'll say this. It's, there's, there's more music. I think it's easier to follow. I think the play is easier to follow than the movie. The movie, I still don't know what the movie's about. I don't think anybody Feel does. free to tell me what the movie is about <laughs> if you're watching this. Like, right, give me like a paragraph explanation of exactly what the movie's about. I know, I know what emotions it elicits. I know why people love it. It's about being an individual. It's about discovering like your true self. And, it's a, and I think that's why it became a cult classic. And all of those elements are in the theatrical production, maybe even more so. But there are some, uh, Abby has created some of these kind of tender, relatable moments on top of everything else that you see in the movie that are, it's less confusing maybe than the movie might be. Um, and we have, I, I think that our singers are more talented than the singers were in the movie. I'm not kidding. They are incredible singers and that goes all the way down to the ensemble. Uh, and also I think like the one thing that if you watch the movie and you're shouting whatever it is that you're going to shout when you watch this, they can't hear you. Uh, we, can, we can hear you. Well, so, so who knows what will happen with that? Like, it, it would be kind of fun. Well, and this is, I, 
when you see the movie, it, you know, for those who've seen the movie, it, it is kind of this interactive experience. People dress up sure. and throw things and shout things. We, 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 um, we hope some of are, that happens. Are y'all encouraging that to happen at Coca Booth? <laughs> I, I know we're encouraging interaction. You you have a voice. You're allowed to use it whenever you want to. That's an amendment that we're very proud of in this country. Um, I don't know that they want people throwing uh, things at the actors. Yeah, I don't. I'm know. guessing that. And, and I don't, we haven't really, I don't think we've, we've completely cultivated that, but I'm guessing that. Like, and are people going to be dressed? Are you encouraging people to oh, dress heck up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, it's Halloween. I yeah. mean, it's Halloween. Wear whatever Time. you want, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, There's props, too. They're giving people props. They can oh, wear props. Okay. Like sand and the toilet paper. All right. So there will be props that, <laughs> that we will provide them or that they don't have to buy. bring? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that you can, you can buy props. Um, I think, you know, as long as you're not doing anything that endangers anybody around you, I think, like, this is... But it'll still have that interactive, I guess, that's oh, what God, I'm saying. Oh, I hope so. I know, we're, can, we're planning on it. Yeah, we're, we're banking on it. Like, we're pausing at, at certain moments when we're rehearsing, uh, because some of the people who have watched the movies who are in the cast and know it, they'll shout out yeah. one or two things. Now, I'll say this. There is, like, there's a cheat sheet for, that I looked up online where literally they have someone shouting during every single line in the movie. I don't know how much fun that would be. If, if there's, you know, a thousand mm -hmm. people shouting as loud as they can and can't hear anything that's going on on stage. Of course. Um, but I, I, I would, I hope there's some kind of interaction. That's good. Well, yeah. I mean, and people can dress up, I guess. Before, oh, yeah. But right? besides yeah. the interaction, and I, I think dress that'll up. kind of, like dress dressing up. up and coming yeah. in costume and their trash bags and their whatever they're going to be wearing. Yeah. You know, that, that's good. Um, do that. Do that. Yeah. Dress up. Dress up. <laughs> don't throw things, but dress up. Probably don't throw things. I don't, like, I don't even know the answer to that. So good it's, it's good. There's a lot of dancing going on. So if there's like catch up on the stage, it seems like a bad idea. Not going to work. Yeah. Um, so back in 2015, there were a lot of rumors about you going to Broadway. And those were there? Were, uh, well, that's. I read online that there were some. Uh, I, that's first I've heard of that. Twenty fifteen. That was like back, years ago. back a few years ago. Right, right. And um, and I read this article. No, he's not going to Broadway. But um, over the summer there was kind of marriage the musical that mm -hmm. came out on one of your videos, mm -hmm. and it seemed like maybe you were thinking about um, producing kind of. Uh, Take, taking the Holderness clan on the stage, you know, kind of putting those stories to the stage. Any plans on that? Any plans to yeah, I'm trying to do write, something? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to write more original music that could work its way onto a stage. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I wrote in the past was, was parody based, and that's not a good, that's not a very cost effective way to write a musical to have to <laughs> license everybody else's uh, IP. And so I've, I've moved more into original music. I, I um, have the framework and the outline of a musical and I'm writing little bits and pieces of songs that would go in that. Uh, one of them I, I put out and I actually um, used some local actors and it was the song called I Didn't Screw Up about, <laughs> yes. how, about how you met your, and that's maybe the one you were talking about. And uh, it, got a, it got a great reception. I think it's one of the reasons why I'm in this play. Uh, it is, it's the best thing I've done this year and it makes me want to do more. And so I am continuing to write I'm doing this while I'm doing 40 other things. <laughs> and so I'm trying to give myself about a year to get 20 or 30 songs that could get pared down to 10 or 15. And I'm, and I'm needing, I, I realize I need to collaborate with someone who knows how to write the stuff outside of the music, like mm -hmm. the story. I know what I want the story to be. I'm not a, I'm not a pro writer. I'm not a pro <laughs> writer. So, uh, so a part of this year has been not just getting advice, but also finding some people who might be capable of partnering up with me. That is happening as we speak. And so there, there, there could be a partnership with a, a good friend of mine who actually writes for Broadway, hopefully soon, uh, that would allow me to kind of have it in a package that I can show to people, um, put on locally or regionally or something and see what happens. I don't know that I would be in it. Okay. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know who the main character would be. I don't think my wife is totally psyched about being on stage. I think she'd rather be helping me write it, which she is. So you're in this interesting place. Like, who would play you in the well, movie we, version or stage version uh, of your life I, or I, whatever? I, someone, someone better than me. <laughs> A better version of me that is, is, what I'm, is what I'm hoping. Uh, but so the answer is it took, it took uh, I think, Lin-Manuel like eight years to write this musical that is the best thing I've ever seen on stage. Um, I've seen people who have also written 
plays in a weekend by locking themselves in a hotel. I'm hoping to be somewhere in between <laughs> for that, but it's very early. Uh, we just decided to put one of the songs out because we could. And I think that uh, that we'll probably find a place in the musical if we did it. Very exciting. So let's go back to Rocky Horror for a second. Um, it is playing for two nights at Coca Booth Amphitheater mm -hmm. in Cary, October mm -hmm. 26th, 27th. Yes. Um, Friday and Saturday. Oh my gosh, that's a week from now. <laughs> and and um, people can buy tickets. They can find out more information on the Theater Raleigh mm -hmm. website, on the Theater Raleigh Facebook page, or on the Coca Booth. Yeah, Theater or you can website. go to, like, honestly, you can go to ETix and Google Rocky Horror. That's Perfect. a lot of people give that advice because it's super easy. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so that could also happen. Well, thanks so much for sitting down with me. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you. Bye.